Hey guys, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's edition of What I Eat in a Day YouTuber Reviews, I'm going to be taking a look at Jenna from Sweet Potato Soul. Now, Jenna is a vegan chef, blogger, cookbook author, and YouTuber who is known for her vegan recipes and plant-based cooking tips. She's also a new mom to a super adorable one and a half year old girl and has documented her vegan pregnancy and what she's feeding her vegan baby. Now, before we jump into my review today, a quick reminder to, of course, subscribe to this video and ring the bell so that you never miss out on any videos. I also want to start with my general disclaimer that the information in this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only, and you should always seek out the help of a registered dietitian or medical professional for your unique case. Also, please be kind in the comments both here and on Jenna's channel. Uh, we need to keep this a supportive space for learning. Okay, let's meet Jenna. We already had breakfast this morning, of course, since we've been awake since five. Uh, still cut oats, and I make it in the instant pot. I either have that, like I did today, or I have to have porridge. While I'm eating, I often feed her solids. Today she had sweet potato and spinach, and then also butternut squash. Yummy. Yummy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a big piece. Be careful. And every morning I have my very necessary and delicious matcha oat milk latte that I sweetened with maple syrup. Okay, so I love Janae's style for making oatmeal in the Instant Pot. And let this be a PSA for all of the busy folks out there. If you haven't purchased an Instant Pot, you gotta get on that stat. It's great also for making baby friendly foods as well because it makes everything super tender and soft really, really fast. As for Janae's breakfast, uh, you all know I love oats in the morning, so this is definitely a great start. And steel cut oats are slightly higher in protein and fiber than rolled oats, with a slightly lower glycemic index as well, so that is great. I also heard her say that she's breastfeeding at the time of this video, and oats are commonly thought of as a galactagogue, aka a food that increases breast milk supply. Now, research-wise, there is no great evidence that oats actually make a big difference, but they are rich in iron, which tends to be lower postpartum, and they feel really like soothing and relaxing to eat, in my experience, so that also may help with milk supply. Now, I did see her make this, so I don't know exactly what is in uh, Jenna's oats, but it looks like maybe some raisins, um, maybe some plant-based milk in there as well. She also has a matcha oat milk latte, which sounds super delicious. I love the addition of maple syrup. But of course, if she wanted to boost up the protein, which nursing does increase needs for, she could opt for some soy milk over oat milk, which has about eight grams of protein versus three grams per cup, respectively. We could also add a little more satiating fat in there with some almond butter, uh, flax, hemp, or chia seeds. But overall, this looks like a really hearty, satisfying meal. As for her babe, uh, sweet potato, spinach, and squash all sound like a great starter meal for solids. And I get that not all moms are comfortable with baby led weaning and prefer to spoon feed baby. But at 10 months old, which Janae says her daughter is in this video, um, babe is definitely ready for some solid finger foods as well. So hopefully we'll see that mixed into the rotation. Let's take a look at snack. I have a little pear. Seems like every time I leave the house, I leave the house super hungry because it just takes that long to get out of the house. Oh my gosh, those are two of my absolute favorite fruits of all time. And fruit is definitely a great quick grab and go snack that you can enjoy while you're on a walk or as you're prepping lunch as Jenny is doing. And you guys know that I always recommend pairing your fruit with a source of fat or protein. But also as a busy mom, I totally understand that sometimes you're just like on the go and you need something really quick and handheld and easy. And fruit is ultimately a nutrient dense, easy choice. I personally love Asian pears because they provide anywhere between four to nine grams of fiber, depending on the size. But of course, if we threw in some nuts or seeds or something like that, made a little trail mix, this would make this an even more satiating snack. Let's see what Jenna prepares for lunch. So we're gonna make these citrus beet bowls. That meal kit meal looks totally amazing. 
And I can totally appreciate a good meal delivery service as a busy breastfeeding mompreneur. And this particular meal looks amazing and well-balanced. We've got protein and carbs from the chickpea and millet. We've got healthy fats from the avocado and some lovely produce from the beets, greens, and citrus. I also love how this recipe features millet seeds as the primary grain, which provides a lot of nutrients that can be harder to get on a plant-based diet, like calcium and iron, plus it's a source of protein. A quick tip, of course, for cooking millet is to soak it overnight prior to cooking, as this will help to enhance the nutritional absorption and digestibility. Let's see what else. What are you eating, honey bunny? You had your milk and now what are you eating? Now you're eating peas and squash. Love a good ginger tea, and it is considered a safe herb for breast milk production, so that's great. As for baby Jay's meal, looks like she's getting in some pincer grasp practice here, which is amazing and so important at her age. And since, of course, we want to focus on iron-rich foods in the first six months of solids, I'm happy to see that you know sweet potatoes and peas and squash are actually all solid plant-based sources. So, yay, mama! Let's take a look at snack. I'm hungry again. I just finished feeding the baby. So I'm gonna have some tortilla chips and hummus. Oh girl, I remember those nursing days. I mean, the hunger is sometimes just like insatiable. On average, you burn about 20 calories per ounce of breast milk produced. And I have no idea what Gen A produces, but when my son was 10 months old, I was pumping around 45 ounces a day, which if you do the math, is an extra 900 extra calories required. Your girl could eat. So on average, most nursing people need an additional 400 to 600 calories. And this snack ticks all the boxes in my books. It's convenient, it's fast, it's delicious, and it's filled with protein, fiber, and fat. And by the way, babies love hummus too, so that would be great for baby Jay as well. Let's move on to dinner. I'm thinking tofu teriyaki. Okay, so since I saw this, I was totally inspired to make tofu teriyaki at home because it looks so damn good. Now we've got some protein from the tofu, tons of fiber from the bell peppers and the leafy greens, as well as some complex carbs from the black rice. Now, I don't know anything about the tofu that she used, but I usually recommend, especially if you are following a vegan diet, to ensure that you're buying a tofu that is calcium set or has calcium sulfate listed on the label, as this will help you get a little bit extra calcium into the diet. I also think it's great that Jenna is using black rice, which research actually has shown to have the highest antioxidant activity compared to other rice varieties. Black rice also contains a plant-based pigment called anthocyanin, which research suggests may have anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-cancer properties. Let's move on to day two. Ugh, love a good tofu scramble. I mean, it's a great egg swap and is packed with protein, calcium, and iron. And this meal is fantastic in general. I mean, we've got carbs from the potato, veggies from the kale and bell peppers, protein from the tofu and vegan sausage, and some fat for cooking. Now let's see what she has to say about her supplements. Okay, so I love that Janae is taking a supplement and I also like Ritual products too. And this multi does have omega-3, B12, D3, and iron, which are often the nutrients of concern in a plant-based diet. So that looks great. Let's take a look at lunch. Okay, so in typical busy breastfeeding mama fashion, Jenna is eating her lunch in two parts. 
she's got leftovers first and then after she breastfeeds and puts baby to bed she takes the time to prep herself a kale salad and this meal as a whole is just incredible. I mean, she's got carbs from the squash, rice, and sweet potato, protein in the chickpeas and black beans, fat in the avocado, and of course, lots of fiber rich veg with the massaged kale. And massaging your greens isn't just for fun. <laughs> Getting a little oil or lemon juice on there and going to town definitely makes it easier for those tough fibers to break down for digestion. Plus, it adds a ton of flavor. Kale is actually one of my favorite greens for everyone, but especially for vegans because two cups of raw kale provides around 20% of your daily calcium needs and 11% of your daily iron recommendation, which is great during pregnancy and for rebuilding stores postpartum. Now let's see what's for snack. So oranges are what we eat all the time. Obviously they're so high in vitamin C. Mm gorgeous looking oranges and i think fruit is a great snack especially if you're breastfeeding and your fluid needs are extra high since oranges for example are about 88 percent water but of course if she wants to boost up the satiety factor especially if she is feeling extra hungry from nursing pairing it with a source of fat or protein like nuts or nut butter would definitely help her out but for a small tie over snack especially if you're not super hungry Totally a nutritious choice. Let's see what she's having for dinner. Say carrots, avocado, mystery greens, and rice. Yummy. Okay, so now baby is asleep. For dinner, I'm gonna make a red lentil curry. All right, so we see the meal prep hunger hit again with Janae snacking on some tortilla chips and I think another orange while she's cooking. I mean, let's be real, we all do it. Isn't that the benefit of being the one to do the cooking? I mean, the chef gets to eat first. <laughs> but of course, I will say if she's constantly finding herself feeling famished before dinner can just like get on the table, pairing her earlier orange with something a little bit more satiating may help carry her through. Obviously, no big deal, but more of a suggestion for all of you guys who are watching, who are looking to optimize your snacks. As for her dinner, it looks like we've got a combination of black and white rice for the carbs, lots of red lentils for some protein, and at the end of the video, she also adds some greens on top and a squeeze of lime juice. This is a super easy, balanced meal, which she's made even easier by putting it into the Instant Pot. I also like that she adds a squeeze of lime juice because the vitamin C from the lime will help the body better absorb the iron from the lentils. Not that I'm overly concerned with Janae's iron intakes because as of right now, they seem to actually be on point. But this is just a general great nutrition tip, especially for individuals following a plant-based diet or menstruating people in general who have higher needs. And Baby J's meal also looks really great. I mean, we're getting a little iron from the greens, which is particularly important. And while I'm not really sure what kind of rice Babe is eating, if you've got a little one and you're worried about the arsenic in rice, look for white basmati rice from California, India, and Pakistan, and sushi rice from the States, as these do tend to have lower amounts of inorganic arsenic than brown rice or rice grown in Arkansas, uh, Texas, Louisiana, and most other US states. This is actually a huge topic that I've personally looked into a lot because my two-year-old adores rice. So if you want a whole video about rice and arsenic, definitely leave me a comment below. All right, let's move on to day three. Okay, so another really busy day for Janae and baby. Love the idea of oats in the Instant Pot to save the day and save so much time. And she adds some pecans for healthy fats and protein, along with some banana for some fruit, in addition to the orange that she has earlier. She also has the matcha latte with some non-dairy milk, which looks amazing. 
Now, while this meal is definitely fiber rich and probably pretty satiating, research does suggest that breastfeeding people do need extra protein, perhaps even double what their non-lactating counterparts need since so much of that is going to baby in the milk. So to bump this up, we could add some soy milk or yogurt, some hemp hearts, or some silken tofu to the oats. That would be some really easy suggestions. As for baby's breakfast, I love the variety, and I also fully support moms serving their kids the same thing that they are eating. I mean, modeling is so important, and I've heard Janae talk about this on her channel. But because iron needs are so high between six and 12 months, if you wanted to do regular oatmeal, we could up the iron with some hemp hearts, nut butter, or some dried apricots in there. Let's take a look at snack. She is having lentils, brown rice, peppers, carrots, and a little bit of avocado in there. Mm. Yum. Okay, so in this quick clip, we see Janae enjoying an apple while in the park with baby Jay. While we know the fruit, of course, is Janae's snack of choice, especially in the mornings, I really love how Janae makes sure to add variety by switching up the types of fruit that she's eating. So for instance, she had an Asian pear and persimmon on day one, an orange on day two, and now an apple on day three. So I'm really glad to see that even though she likes some level of routine in having her fruit first thing in the morning as her snack, she's still flexible when it comes to adding variety. And Jay's lunch looks amazing. I love that she's got her practicing with her little baby spoon. Honestly, Janae, you are going to be so happy that baby Jay has mastered that skill early. Let's take a look at what she's making for lunch. Just some corn and bell pepper sauteed with garlic. Some of the lentil like burrito taco meat with walnuts, brown rice, and some lettuce. And I'm gonna add guacamole. That looks amazing. Uh, I love the lentil and walnut combination as kind of a ground meat swap because not only does it kind of feel like animal protein, it also provides a good amount of protein, fiber, and healthy fats. Burrito bowls, I think, are just a really great adaptable recipe, and Janae totally makes it work with what she has on hand in quarantine. We've got some carbs from the brown rice and corn, healthy fats from the guac and the walnuts, protein from the lentil meat, and a little veg in there. Looks super delicious. Let's see her snack with Ezekiel bread. So for my toast, I just did some tahini, which I made at home, and I'm gonna put some sweet potato butter on it. Love this nice, sweet, and salty combination with Ezekiel bread, homemade tahini, and sweet potato butter. This is my kind of snack right here. We've got protein, fiber, and some carbs from the bread, healthy fats and protein in the tahini, and a little more carbs in the sweet potato butter. Plus, Ezekiel bread is made with sprouted grains, and sprouting actually helps to reduce the number of anti-nutrients and may help improve the absorption of important vitamins and minerals. Let's finish things off by taking a look at dinner. For dinner, I'm gonna make tempeh tikka masala. I am gonna be using tempeh that I myself made at home last week. I just need to say that this vegan tikka masala looks amazing and even more so knowing that Jenna made the tempeh herself. Girl, you are making all the rest of us moms out there look really bad. <laughs> Just kidding, I mean, seriously though, I am impressed, especially as a new mom in COVID times, come on. But we've got some complex carbs from the butternut squash and the rice, high fiber veg from the cauliflower, and of course protein from the tempeh and some fat for cooking in. Just some all around really great balance. And for those of you unfamiliar with tempeh, as Jenny mentions, it's made from fermented soybeans, which actually helps to improve digestion by acting as a prebiotic to feed healthy gut bacteria. 
Not to mention that tempeh is rich in protein, fiber, iron, and calcium, making it an excellent plant-based protein option. I don't see why Baby J couldn't totally get in on that. It would be a great nutrient-dense complement to her cauliflower and squash, and very much so safe to eat at her age. So hopefully Babe will get to sample out the family recipe really soon. Now, in general, is this way of eating balanced? I would say definitely. I mean, Jenny's meals are not only wonderfully balanced nutritionally, but she also adds a ton of variety to her meals as well. She does a great job of rotating her plant-based protein sources between tofu, chickpeas, black beans, lentils, walnuts, and tempeh. And she adds different carbs like various fruit, rice, sweet potatoes, squash, bread, and corn. Now her macronutrient ranges are consistently within the recommendation, and she's also exceeding her fiber, calcium, and iron intakes for the day. I will say on some days her fiber does get pretty high, almost three times the 25 gram recommendation. But judging by her videos on transitioning to a plant-based diet, I would bet that this probably doesn't really bother Janae since her gut has grown accustomed to eating a large amount of fiber-rich carbs. But I'm just flagging this because, you know, for a lot of average people's guts, it might be a lot to handle. So if you're watching this and you're trying to eat more plant-based, you'll want to add that fiber in slowly to prevent a lot of bloating and digestive distress. Now, in terms of calories, we had to make some serious estimations since some of her meal prep wasn't really shown and it was hard to know exactly how much of what was being added. But it looked to me around 2,000 calories a day, give or take. And I don't know how much milk Janae is producing, and she probably doesn't know if she's nursing, but it is possible that she could use a little bit more fuel to optimize her own nutrition and make enough for babe. Especially because it's sometimes harder to get enough calories when a higher fiber intake makes you feel so full. But on average, breastfeeding people need around an extra 500 calories above their baseline. But because Jay is on salads now, it is possible that she's not taking in as much. It's very hard for me to conclusively say, and it doesn't really matter because from watching Janae, it's pretty clear that she is really just following her hunger cues, snacking whenever she's hungry, and grabbing whatever is convenient and delicious looking. If I was seeing a lot of diet talk and restriction happening, I might be worried, especially when nursing a baby, but I think we have a real intuitive eater on our hands, so it's just not my concern. The only reason I bring this up is that so other nursing people out there who are eating like 3,000 calories don't worry that they're eating too much. Follow those hunger cues, nourish your body however you can. I mean, get somebody else to make sure that there is always food around for you to eat because Breastfeeding and parenthood is hard enough. Mama, you are doing so great. Now, what can we take away from Janae's channel? Overall, I honestly think there is a lot that we can take away from Janae's channel, whether you're vegan or you're just simply trying to incorporate more plant-based foods into your diet in a really simple and practical way. All of the recipes I saw here are balanced and nutrient dense and they're just super simple with no fuss. And as we saw, many of her recipes can be made in the Instant Pot. It doesn't get easier than that. In addition to providing information on her channel about how to eat vegan on a budget, as well as easy vegan meal prep ideas and hacks, Jenny also provides some really helpful and practical information on how to start eating more plant-based. So for example, she talks about the importance of taking a B12 supplement, introducing foods slowly to allow your body time to adjust to eating more fiber, reading food labels, and meal prepping. So amazing. She also provides some really helpful suggestions on how to satisfy cravings for animal-based foods by giving tips on kind of mimicking the flavor and texture of common foods like ground meat, eggs, or cheese. In addition to this, Jenny also talks about the importance of having a healthy mindset when starting a vegan diet by thinking about it in terms of eating more whole foods rather than depriving yourself of food. This is exactly what I always say about thinking about adding foods, not taking them away. Jenny also acknowledges that while vegan foods do tend to be lower in calories, it doesn't mean that you should feel deprived, but rather you should give yourself permission to eat enough to feel nourished and satiated. 
This is a really important message because I know a lot of people assume that plant-based diets will inevitably leave you super hungry, fatigued, or nutritionally depleted. And while that does happen, I mean, it can and does happen with any diet, I think Jenna is a really great example of how following a vegan diet can be wholesome, nourishing, sustainable, and also super easy to pull off. When it comes to talking about wellness topics like bloating or immunity, I also appreciate that Jenna generally does so in a very balanced way without providing a lot of misinformation. So for instance, in her video on how to boost immunity, which she released at the top of the pandemic, she talks about the importance of rest, exercise, staying hydrated, gut health, managing stress, limiting alcohol, as well as incorporating a variety of plant-based foods to increase vitamin C and antioxidant intakes. These are all evidence-based tips on how to support general immunity, and not once does she imply that doing these things will prevent or cure COVID-19. So thank you to Janae for not adding fuel to the fire when it comes to the misinformation around COVID and immunity, which as you know, I covered at length in my video right here. Similarly, in her video about how to reduce bloating, she discusses the importance of eating fiber, maintaining healthy gut bacteria, exercising to promote digestion, and keeping a food journal to keep track of any food triggers that might be causing digestive distress. Keeping a food journal is particularly important as the vegan diet tends to be a little bit higher in FODMAP foods, which can cause excess gas and bloating in those who are sensitive. So if you wanna learn more about bloating on a vegan diet and FODMAPs, I cover it in a lot more detail right here. Finally, are there any problematic claims or assumptions made by this channel? Well, one thing I just want to flag on Janae's channel is her language around describing bloating. So for instance, she talks about controlling bloat in order to have a flat tummy or to keep things nice and tight so that stuff doesn't hang out. Janae even makes a comment that even if she's not actually gassy, that she doesn't want to look bloated. Now, diet culture is already riddled with enough messages on the importance of having a flat tummy and how to de-bloat with different bogus supplements and teas. And while I do think Janae has really good intentions with the information that she provides her followers, I do just wish that the focus could be more on controlling bloating to reduce physical discomfort rather than reducing bloating to look a certain socially acceptable way. Another thing that I briefly want to highlight and flag is that in one video I caught Janae promoting one of the most ridiculous diets I've ever reviewed, food combining. So she shares that she follows the food combining rule of eating fruit in the morning and avoiding fruit too close to a cooked meal to reduce bloating. So now the solo fruit meals and snacks kind of make more sense, except they don't. Anyway, Jenna's rationale is that fruit digests really quickly and that eating fruit after a cooked meal prolongs digestion and causes bloating. This is just not evidence-based, folks. And I've already debunked this theory ad nauseum in my videos here and here. But even though food combining is totally BS, I do appreciate that Janae acknowledges that this is just what works for her anecdotally, even if there's not much science to back it up. So if eating fruit in the morning and in between meals feels good to Janae, great. But I just wish that this routine didn't need to be tied to a bogus theory that is just not evidence-based. Bottom line, Janae's channel is a great resource for vegan meal inspiration and cooking hacks and is an awesome example of how to follow a vegan diet in a healthy and sustainable way without deprivation or restriction. She's also super adorable and a pleasure to watch. And I think she's a great role model for a lot of us busy parents. So if you're not following Sweet Potato Soul already, be sure to head on over to her channel and be inspired. Well, folks, that is all for today's video. If you liked it, be sure to give it that thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with who you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.